Hello there, this is Mr. Long and I'm your science teacher today. This is part two of the video. You have not watched if you have not watched part one, which is the one on state of matter, please look at the description for the link to it, or you may look at the playlist and look at my channel to look for part one states of matter. Now this video is meant for P4s and the P5s. So the P4 and P5 do have your practice paper ready. If you do not have the uh, question with you or the practice paper with you, no problem. Just get a piece of paper, a pen, and when the question comes up, just pause the video. Try it first on your own, on your paper, before pressing the play button to listen to the explanation to check if you have gotten it correct. So I'll begin with the primary four questions from uh, parts of uh, on states of matter. The primary five, please participate as well by pausing the video, trying the question, and then listening to the explanation. So uh, this is where we stop at the other time. We talk about states of matter. We talk about the properties of the matter in the different states, right? Now, of course, some of you may uh, also remember that there is something that Mr. Long did not mention, which is the idea about compressed, all right? What does compressed mean? That's linked to actually the part on the space, on the, on the shape. Since gas does not have a fixed shape, so if we compress gas, actually we can change the shape. And the best example is the one from the syringe. Right? For those who did a practical test, you'll be very familiar. There's air inside. We have to apply a force on the plunger. What happens will be the plunger will go all the way in, almost all the way, right? And compress the air inside. And this is also an experiment to show you that air can be compressed and air doesn't have a fixed shape. Of course, water, uh, let's not confuse the two. Uh. So, air, so air has a few properties. Air has mass, air has no fixed shape, uh, air occupies space, and air can be compressed. Liquids can, does not have an, a fixed shape, but liquid cannot be compressed. So if this was filled with liquid instead, we try to force this plunger down, it will not go in. All right, because liquid cannot be compressed. So this one will be cannot be compressed. Likewise for solid, right? Solid cannot be compressed too. Cannot be compressed. Okay. So now that we have completed this revision for the general ideas here, let's take a look at some questions. This is question 23 from the P4 SA2 practice paper. <coughs> so if you have studied the chart below, right, let's see what happens here. Start, does it have mass? Yes. So we know for sure, if it's yes, this is a matter. We're talking about a matter. Does it have a fixed shape? It says no. No fixed shape. So no fixed shape, it can either be a liquid, all right, or a gas. So here it can either be a liquid or gas, I'm not sure which one yet. Let's go on further. Can it be seen? Yes. You know that gas, we, uh, of course some gases have colors, but typically the gas that you will be exposed to, such as air, which is a mixture of gases, or water vapor, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all these gases do not have colors, so they cannot be seen. All right. If it can be seen, then of course it is unlikely to be a gas in your context in any case. So therefore this can be seen, yes, should be a liquid, such as water, Milo, Rabina, all this you can see. So let's see. Yeah? If it's a matter, it will definitely has mass. Okay. M is a solid only, cannot be because solid would have a fixed shape, so this is wrong. M is a liquid only, well, a liquid here is something that you can see. All right. So, yes. Of course, when you go up to upper uh, secondary school, you may come back and and you learn more about science, and you, you may argue with me saying that there could be gases that are uh, have colors, and I've admitted that yes. In the context of a primary school right now, based on what you have learned and what you know, uh, take it as gases is something. Gas is something you cannot see. And can be a liquid or a solid. All right, it cannot. It can be a liquid, but cannot be a solid. So we're left with A and C are the, the best options available here. So answer here is three, A and C. All right. Now let's go on to the next question. Question thirty six. 
The notice has been going to MCQ uh, primarily because MCQ is not it's something that I think is easier to get marks, although it's not easy. Just now we discussed question 23 and for our class. There were quite a number of you, eight of you who got this wrong. So I hope you understand the explanation there and you have watched the video explanation of states of matter. Now let's go on to question 36. Mrs. Yen's baby has a fever and doctor has given medication medicine to her baby to take. The baby needs to take exactly 3 milliliters of the medicine in liquid form. Right? So notice, liquid form, this gives us a clue, it's about the topic of states of matter. So these are words that suggest to you, uh, that tell you what is this question all about. So when you talk about this, liquid form, a certain volume here, all right? This thing should come to mind in your head. Liquid, matter, has mass, no fixed shape, occupy space, cannot be compressed. Now, of course, and here, this tells you, we're going to talk about uh, the accuracy of different uh, apparatus in the science lab. Put a tick in the boxes below for the apparatus that Mrs. Yen can use to measure 3 ml of medicine accurately to be given to the baby. Now, of course, here you must use your mathematical sense as well. Okay, let's take a look at the first one. This is like a flask, and there are some graduations here. Now, there are how many equal parts here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 parts. Interesting, huh? Uh, I'm not sure why it's 9 parts. If 9 parts, 50 divided by 9. I thought that should be 10. In any case, it divided by 9. Each part is probably about 4 point something. In other words, this is roughly 4 point, maybe 8, 4.9 ml. How do I measure 3 ml from here? It's difficult. I'm not sure exactly where it would be. I cannot measure exactly 3 ml. See, exactly. How about the measuring cylinder? Well, it goes to, and let's take a look. Huh? This is in the milliliters, and it has 1 ml, 2 ml. 3 ml, hooray! So if I can pull this plunger backwards, and this is of course the nozzle is deep inside the medicine, I can pull in the liquid form of the medicine, which will fill up the container because it doesn't have a fixed shape, right? It can fill up this container all the way to 3 ml. So then I know that I can actually extract exactly 3 ml of the medicine into the syringe and feed it to the baby. So this would definitely be the answer. Let's take a spoon. Uh, there are nothing that talks to me about milliliters here. I'm not sure what this is. All right. Uh, how much is three? I can probably estimate, but I cannot get an exact number, so I will not choose this. Likewise for this. <coughs> so the only answer is this, right? The syringe. Let's go on to question thirty-seven from the P four practice paper. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's carry on to question thirty-six. In the science practical test, a student was given two identical syringes, X and Y, as seen below. Each syringe was covered with black paper and completely filled with either air or water. So, we're not sure which one. Huh? There are two syringes. Right one is filled with air, another one with water. But because it is covered with black paper and this is opaque, which means light cannot pass through and you can't see it, we're not sure what it is. So it's like a quiz. Let's find out what is inside this. To do so, we need to apply certain properties that we know. All right, we can't use this because both liquids and gas has mass. All right, they both occupy space. They both do not have fixed shape. So the only difference I can see here is ah, liquids cannot be compressed, but a gas can be compressed. We should use this difference to find out which one is liquid and which one is gas. The pupil was, and let's notice this part, the plunger here, right before it's being pressed as a distance D, distance D here as in the graph as well, and this is actually 10 centimeters. Huh? What I'm doing now is what we call reading the picture. And later we go on to read the graph. And in science, reading pictures and graph is just as important as reading words because clues are littered everywhere in the pictures and the graph. 
and only when you can put all the clues together that you can understand the full picture of this story in this science story here and then you are able to answer the questions it's just that simple all right so don't have you must definitely pay attention to this picture so this is a sealed opening which means that if this were to be pressed in the contents inside whether it's air or it is water cannot escape because it's sealed all right so take note of this 10 centimeters so if this is filled with water let's imagine water cannot be compressed if the student try to press this part very hard will this plunger go in no it will not which means the distance here will remain at 10 centimeters if now this part here were to contain air instead can air be compressed as it is a mixture of gases yes air can be compressed so when a student would press hard down on the plunger it can go in not all the way it can go in somewhat which means this distance this distance here will decrease become smaller so you see here distance here d at 10 centimeters no change right distance here change it does a decrease there's a decrease which means that this syringe y must contain air and this one contains water that's why it cannot be compressed for those of you who got it wrong you have not applied this knowledge about liquids cannot be compressed gas can be compressed into this question to understand it all right you got to do that so based on this graph and based on reading a picture now you know that actually x contains water and y contains air please do the correction in your green pen so explain your answer in b let's go back to the concept being tested as I mentioned the concept being tested here is this liquids cannot be compressed and gas can be compressed and this concept will be the answer explain your answer in part b1 so i'll explain water cannot be compressed all right this part is a concept and what's the evidence i must link to the evidence inside this because it says based on the graph right so uh, as the plunger cannot be pressed down at all right this explains the part on for, for x but i also need to explain the part for y because i must answer must explain both this answer all right air can be compressed all right i want to highlight the part which is the scientific concept this is the concept and where's my evidence evidence is here right this is can is decrease as the plunger could oh sorry was pressed down or could be pressed down <coughs> so this part is my concept and this part will be my evidence all right and the evidence comes from the graph that's provided for me okay so make sure you have this of course you can express it in different ways right you can talk about uh, the distance D remains unchanged for X but distance uh, D for Y actually uh, decrease showing that actually the plunger was pushed in was pressed down right of course, you can also use pushed in. Right? Could not be pushed in. Once I've done with this, let's go on to the last question from this practice paper. Question 37. Sorry, we are still not at 37 yet. This is question has many parts. Kit lower an empty glass with a small ball into a container of water until it touched the bottom of the container. She observed that the water level inside the glass was not the same as the water level outside. So there's a water level inside the glass and there's a water level outside the glass. I'm going to highlight them to show you the two different water levels. 
and the water could float on the water the ball could float on the water so what is inside here although it says empty you know for sure that's not empty something is occupying the space inside because you know that matter occupies space right whichever state is in so what could be this you're right this is air so air occupies the space inside this so explain why there's a difference in the water level inside and outside the glass remember that the demonstration i showed you in the first video all right about two matter cannot occupy the same space at the same time if air was inside the empty glass as it lowers well, actually what does this part mean let me show you the diagram so at first there was a basin with water and there was a ball here and this kid lowers an empty glass over this this is at first then as she pushes this in right what happens is now this get pushed in so what the, the water that is here this was the original water level huh, of in the container it actually get pushed down and goes up outside and as she pushed the glass further in all right further in what happens is the water that was inside here get pushed out some more right and the water level outside increases even more of course my diagram is a bit more exaggerated all right but that's the idea so air is actually inside this this air inside this air is inside and air occupy the space in the glass so why is there a difference in the water level inside and outside the glass so we are going back to this property about gases uh, occupying space so air in the glass you have to specify where's the air because air is also outside the glass right so which air are talking about and the glass occupies space so water in the basin could not occupy all the space in the glass right it did occupy some of the space in the glass but not all that's the first part to the answer but i only answer the part about what level inside the glass all right how about the what level outside Let's see, uh, air in the glass occupies space, so water in the basin could not occupy all the space in the glass. So it, so the water level is low. The second part of the answer, as the air in the glass, as the glass is being pushed down the air in the glass pushed the water outwards into the basin causing the water level in the basin to increase. Right, let's take a look, look at the answer. Air in the glass occupies space, so water in the basin could not occupy all the space in the glass. So the water level in the glass is low. As the glass is is being pushed down the air in the glass pushed the water outwards into the basin causing the water level in the basin to increase all right you can see what level in the basin increases all right whereas the one inside the glass start to decrease getting lower 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 now, science answer can be long at times, so you've got to be clear 
regards to which part of the question you are addressing and address them accordingly. Don't just look at the number of lines provided, right? Make sure you know that you must explain the part that's, that says here inside, what level inside, as well as what level outside the glass. Once you have these two parts, then you have addressed this question completely. Now we go to question 37. Now three lumps of plastic are placed into three identical containers, B, C, and D as shown above. Nick then pours water into the three containers till they are completely filled. Which container, B, C, or D, contains the least amount of water? Explain your answer. Well, three lumps of plasticine are placed in three identical containers. Right? Size obviously matters here. If this is bigger, of course it occupy more space. This smaller occupy least space. Now, as she pours water in this, and they are completely filled, means that all the way filled. So which container actually contains more water? Of course, it will be container D. Because the plasticine here is the smallest. So the smallest plasticine will occupy the least amount of space. Right, the smaller plus the same will occupy the least amount of space. So therefore, let's answer D. There are two parts to this question. Please take note. Now, the first part is you must choose <coughs> which container, B, C, or D. I've chosen D. But this is just part one. Right, part one. Part two of this question says explain. So if I just start by part one, I will not get any marks at all. Right, no marks at all because you can just choose this by closing your eyes and just be lucky. So we need to look at your explanation before we can award you any marks. So how is it happening? And remember I said before, whenever you see two or more diagrams, you've got to compare them. So you must use words that shows comparison. So I will say that the plus the same in D is the smallest. Now this word itself shows comparison. Alright, it's like say oh you are the tallest girl in class. You are the um, strongest girl in class. That's a comparison between you and the rest of your classmates. Come back to this, the plus is thin in D is the smallest. So it occupies the least amount of space. This will give you one mark. But what about the two marks? Because I only talk about the plasticine, I haven't talked about the water yet. Oh, so sorry, I made a mistake here. I hope you spotted my mistake. Least amount of water would mean that the plasticine, I hope some of you actually spotted my mistake. If you have, fantastic. So, this is the largest piece. So this piece occupies the most amount of space inside, which means that the amount of space left for the water is the least. So my answer is actually wrong. This answer should be container C. The plasticine in container C is the largest. So it occupies the most amount of space. All right. So by explaining this, I'm explaining that the plasticine in container C is the largest piece. So you occupy the most amount of space. What does that mean? The this means container C has the least amount of space left for water to fill it up completely. This part is one mark. Now, of course, early on, how did I spot my mistake? Because as I was answering, I was checking. And because I was checking, that was why I was able to spot my mistake. Let's double check. Huh? This container is the largest piece of plasticine. Therefore, this plasticine occupies the most amount of space. If you occupy the most amount of space, it means this container has the least amount of space left for water to fill up completely. Therefore, 
it contains the least amount of water. So it has the least amount of water. And that is how you get two marks here. Good job if you have spotted my mistake. Huh? What will the water level in the above container be like after he cuts the plasticity into half? Remember I said that and I showed you the mass does not change. Also the space occupied by um, the solid does not change. So what happened? It will be the same. Explain your answer. Let's talk about the concept. <coughs> the amount of space occupied by a solid does not change even if it is cut into half it is cut into half so it just really means this piece is that one big piece is now two pieces okay two smaller pieces but it is still occupy the same amount of space inside Therefore, the water level inside will be the same because on the same amount of water is required to fill up the container. So the primary force, this will be what you need to complete. I hope that you can spend more time now. We have one more question and go through from the primary 5 paper. Primary 5, please now take out your practice paper. And, uh, so your, your paper is with me now. Alright, uh, I'd like you to look at this question. Sam placed an inverted plastic, transparent plastic cup into a container of water. He then pushed it to the bottom of the container as shown below. Alright, this situation is quite similar to what happened here early on in the primary 4 practice paper. As it pushed in, right, the air inside of course occupies space. Eh? But why is it that now the amount of space occupied by the air has decreased? Which property do we think we can use to explain this? I'm going to pause this video for a while to think about this. Right? Have you think of, thought about this already? Which one should we look at? Yes, you're right. Air can be compressed. The air inside was compressed. It still occupies space, but now it occupies less space because air can be compressed. So give a reason why water did not fill the cup completely as seen above. Well, what is here? What's occupying the space that stops air, stops water from filling up the whole uh, cup? It's simply because the air in the cup occupies space too. Right? Now state how the volume of air in the cup changed when the cup was pushed to the bottom. Explain. Alright, so notice there are actually two questions here. You must be very alert to this. First question is state how the volume of air changed. Second question is explain. Let's state how it changed. So we must again now read the picture. The air the volume of air here was more than the volume of air here. Right? This part here. More volume, less volume. So let's state how the volume of air changed. The volume of air in the cup decreased. Right, we follow this now. When the cup was pushed to the bottom of the container. Now we cannot stop here because this answer only answer part one state how the volume of air in the cup changed let's explain this now and we, to explain we must use properties we must use the scientific concept in this case here it is air gases can be compressed so to explain this i'll use the word because because the air in the cup was compressed so this part will be my first half mark. This part will be my second half mark. So to get full marks for your open ended question, you must first know how many questions are there inside each question. 
how many parts you must take a look at right that's the reason why many of you just get partial mark for your answers in open-ended question because you fail to notice that this one question is actually two questions together state how and explain therefore there must be two parts to the answer last one without using any other objects state one change that Sam can do in order to allow the water to fill up the cup completely in diagram B all right explain your answer so again there are two parts here can you see first part is called state one change Sam can do second part is explain I'm going to give this silly example early on that in the if you are sitting on a chair and somebody else want to sit on the same chair there's somebody could ask you to leave the chair first so if all the water want to fill in this glass right then the air must be asked to leave first so how can we get the air to leave this transparent cup there are many ways but the first idea is get the air to leave let's think of a couple of ways to do so well remember i can actually do this i can turn the, i can invert the, the glass this way to allow the air inside to escape before turning this cup back to its original position <clears throat> another way is i can poke a hole here if there's a hole there what happens is this if there is a hole the air that is inside will escape and the water from the sides will rush in to fill up the space left all right the left behind by the escaping air so let me give this answer instead huh? so we're using any other objects oh but there's an important condition here without using any other objects in order to poke a hole i need a sharp object so i cannot use the method of poking a hole so this is a condition you must take note of the condition as well okay so i guess i have to use this way sam can first tilt the cup to allow the air in the cup to escape so that is my state one change sam can do tilt the cup to allow all the air in the cup to escape now i must explain when the when all the air in the cup has escaped water in the container can rush in to fill up the space or to occupy the space left behind by the air in the cup all right without using any object right? state one change the change would be tilt the cup to allow air in the cup to escape an explanation is the idea of two matter can occupy the same cannot occupy the same space at the same time so you got to let the air leave first so when the air has left the cup then the water in the container can rush in to occupy the space left behind by the air in the cup or is it simply air left behind feel the space left behind okay that should be enough right i hope you have a good time revising and understanding again uh states of matter and how to look at open the question how to identify the many parts of a question how to read pictures and how to also look at graphs in order to find evidences to answer your question right? so in some questions where there are pictures there's text, there are words, and there are graphs, there are tables. You gotta piece all the clues together in order to answer, give a complete and good answer. Right? All the best. I'll see you in the next video.